All right, and we're live. Yay. Uh, so, yay! <laughs> so, welcome, welcome to the Music Publishing oh. Podcast. Uh, I'm here today with Dale Trumbor. Hi, Dale. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Doing pretty good. Um, so, uh, we've known each other for a couple of years now, probably at least five, six, some, yeah. something like that. Five or we, six. We met through the, 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 the Twitter thing. Like, I think. I think you were the first person that I met in real life after meeting them on Twitter. Yeah, I, I think you... Like, you, the first to make that jump. Yeah, you. I think you were one of the first as well. Like you and uh, Daniel Gilliam. Yeah, at, at the, the same, same time. Convention, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was nice. That was um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what, what you do and all that. So I'm a composer. Uh, and which you know, um, <laughs> and I work a lot with uh, text, so I write a lot for voice. And I'm actually about to write a chamber a chamber music piece with spoken text, where the instrumentalists are speaking. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but that's been that's been kind of what I do lately. Lots of music for chorus and for voice, or incorporating text in some way. Nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I... I like your choral music. I've I've always been a fan of that. Thanks. Um, so you're working on a, 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 a you know a big project right now. Your your secular requiem. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of a cool project. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's um, it's the longest piece I've written so far. It's 35 minutes, eight movements for um, a cappella virtuosic choir. Nice. Uh, and Choral Arts Initiative in Orange County is going to premiere it uh, July 16th and 17th. And then we're uh, going to record it, too, um, That's great. for release in January, we're thinking. Very nice. And, yeah, and so it's, uh, it's like a, a meditation on mortality um, in the face of grieving over a loved one. So yeah. how, like, processing grief and how that brings up... Um, feelings about our own mm. mortality. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a, a kind of a big, it, I, I like that the, the recording is kind of part and parcel with the whole thing. That's, it is. That's a, a neat little perk, a little benefit. Yeah, we're doing the exact same program that we're recording. So we'll get multiple shots to do it oh, good. before we record, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I, well, I always think yeah. that's sort of necessary when it comes to, to recording. When uh, Mark and I did our album, yeah, a year and a half, almost two years ago now. God, um, <laughs> we we made a point to to get out there and and do that music a few times in public. Um, yeah, because you can you can practice all you want. You can get together and do it as much as much as you like. But there's something about being in a performance that forces you to learn something new. Yeah, about, about the music. I I know that. Um, yeah, I. We will rehearse new works, and then I'm just, oh yeah, I get it, I get it, and then I get on stage and go, oh, now, now, yeah. I, now I actually do kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, and there's something to be said. I'm there at most of the rehearsals um, oh, nice. for this one too, and I'm I'm accompanying two of the songs that are not the a cappella requiem, obviously, um, but I'm so I'm I'm there being the rehearsal accompanist. Um, for many of the rehearsals and still making tiny changes, even though the concert's in exactly a month. So uh, I don't know how annoying that is to the singers and the director, but I'm enjoying having that option still. Yeah, well, it's, uh, if, it, if it's little yeah. tweaks, that, that's fine. That's not a big deal. It's like, let's make this these two measures a solo or let's hold this longer. It's like very, I hope it's manageable. We'll, we'll <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's better than what I'm I'm doing right now. I have a, a song that's being premiered a week from tomorrow, and I'll finish uh -huh. it tomorrow, or maybe oh, tonight. That's um, fine. I, I, I are you it. singing it or are is... no? Surprisingly, no. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, the Chia Chan duo, um, and mm. they're both really they're really good and, and very quick at learning things. And, and I'm so glad. Like, I, I asked that. Well, I, I offered earlier this month. They, they asked, "Do you, you know, do you have anything for this uh, gay pride concert that we're doing?" I said, uh -huh. oh, "Let me, let me look." And then I thought, "Well, what? I've got this. I'll give this to you. You know, do that if you like. And if if it's not too big of a deal, I could I could write you something too." <laughs> 
and they're like oh great I'm like okay good you know i have to scramble and now um i'm i'm down to the wire and, and you know la last week sort of threw me off for the um those of you who don't follow me on facebook we didn't have a live episode last week because uh my my cat passed i and saw that that and was i'm so sorry thank, that was that was rough that yeah was not that was a, a tough week and i planned on doing a bunch of writing i'm sure there. it's still rough like that's not the kind of thing oh yeah it's it, it, there's a lot get of over quickly there, there's still a lot of sadness but fortunately not the, yeah the, the the unexpected breaking down yeah um yeah but that that threw off not not only the podcast schedule but um but my my writing and so yeah they're, they're very understanding and i, I wrote philip the, the the baritone last night and said okay so i'm i'm nearly done i'll have this i'll have this okay great i i look I, I can't wait to see it when i'm back in town on monday I was like oh, oh. you know <laughs> there you go. Yeah. i'm i'm okay i mean yeah. i would rather have had this done a week ago but right i'm still okay. do you adjust deadlines like i've noticed i'll have a self-imposed deadline and then someone will be like oh yeah you could actually give it to me a week later and then all of a sudden i like have another all week. of the work gets pushed i don't mm -hmm. touch it for a that yeah. day it's bad yeah i'm Very I'm, bad, but... I'm kind of bad with self-imposed deadlines i need to get better yeah. about that I, I i set it and then I'm like but it's not a real one <laughs> so uh... i'm pretty i've gotten pretty good with them at least with coral things because i set them a full month at least before yeah. and so then even when i push them they're still way before still yeah. the actual deadline and so i've i think for the last few commissions i've been early which is something i really want oh, to continue that's, that's good because I'm trying to fight the composer stereotype of being late to everything. I, I and know. I, I feel so terrible yeah. doing this. I mean, I didn't even make the offer until less than a month before. Yeah. So I was expecting them to say, uh, right. but no they way. said, sure. Like, yeah. and Which then, is great because you get a premiere. Yeah, exactly. And That's this awesome. past fall, I, I had another situation where I got a commission really late. Yeah. And just said, okay. Fortunately, I was singing it. So <laughs> it just, Mark had to learn the piano parts. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can sing it because I just wrote it. Now, if, right, right. You've now, learned if, it. If you give me a month, it. I'll forget it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is not your first album, though, going back to the, the Requiem. Um, I, you've got one, one out. Right? I have. I have one, there were plans for a second one, mm. and that has been tabled for now. I don't mm. know if that will end up happening. There, we, there's a, a single, basically, that hasn't actually been released, but is just hovering on SoundCloud, uh, <laughs> hanging out. Um, and that was, that was going to be a few pieces for female voice, uh, mm. and then remixes mm -hmm. of those pieces. Uh, and it was going to be a, a little, um, but it ended up just being one, one track and one remix. And I feel great about those. Good. But there were so many complications with that. And I just, I don't know what to do about that one. But, <laughs> but um, the first album, which was, uh, I think in, in September, it will have been out for five years, which I can't believe because it feels like I recorded it last year maybe yeah, um yeah but that was an album of art songs and uh i recorded them that was kind of the, the same thing where i was working with a soprano but i was playing piano mm -hmm. and making adjustments pretty much right up until and and i think maybe during the recording session <laughs> like we well, can add a beat to this note like yeah, that's do you need to breathe here let's uh -uh. take some time there and not always the best way to work but it's nice <laughs> it's nice to have a collaborator too who allows you that kind of flexibility oh I think. absolutely yeah it's um it's nice to have that that long-term relationship with somebody that they know your work and so yeah. you you can throw yeah. things at them and uh, okay I, I, yeah. I know what you're doing this is um, yeah but that that's a good album i liked that one a, a lot I, I was one of your kickstarter people you were i know you were very <laughs> in the process so. and uh that actually that album kind of inspired me to do this one that we just put out and and really it, it made it clear to me that you can do that they can you can actually do that on your own and yeah. not not wait for um wait for 
Noxos to swoop in because they don't right. do that. That's not because how they they're not, work. They're not going to. If anything, I think it's more often the opposite where you do enough things on your own and then if they are good and you are getting them out into the world, then maybe that would be the time to approach a record label and mm -hmm. try to get picked up by a label. Um, but I think, I think we have, we, what we expect from, I don't know, so much of this business is mm -hmm. turned around. Yeah. Uh, and publishing, like publishing goes the same way where I think it's better to take the initiative and do as much as you can by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, that comes down to so much of the idea that no one cares about your music as much as you do. Right. No, no one, no one is capable of that. They, right. It's not their baby. Right. And, and so they may love it. They may advocate for it, but they, they can't have the enthusiasm that you, that you do. Yeah. That you should. And so, um, waiting, waiting for someone else's enthusiasm to make something happen. You, it's not going to happen probably. Right. Right. <laughs> Especially when you're, when you're relatively young in your career, mm -hmm. which as we know, we get to emerge up until what, 35, 40. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you just emerge you're until you constantly, die. Yeah. constantly emerging. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, my brain just died. <laughs> <laughs> totally derail derailment of thought. Um, yeah, I, I feel like let me, let me just try to backtrack there and, and get back into the, the thought. Uh, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, with uh, da, 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 da. I was oh, I was oh, going to say with we yeah, were talking ahead. about the new recording, the secular yeah. requiem, and then I think with uh, with Jillian, who I recorded Snow White Turn Sixty with, I think. We're hoping to maybe do another album. We're thinking like 2018, but nice. we do it completely the opposite way where if anything, we would, because we, we did this tiny five state tour, which sounds very impressive, but it was actually just going wherever there's friends and family to oh. house us and feed us and come see a show. Um, well, that's kind but of I think, have to do it now. Yeah, I think we'd do it the opposite way around. I think we, if anything, we would do concerts in three different places or more like mm -hmm. where I live in LA and mm -hmm. where she lives in Chicago and maybe where I know her mom has a big community in Louisville, Kentucky. And nice. so like we could go and do a concert there. Um, mm -hmm. But we do all that and then record the album because yeah. that makes so much more sense. Yeah. So that, much that, more that. sense. The music is so much more solid and locked in if you know it well and you've been doing it. Exactly. Especially exactly. in front of people. So. Yeah, I'm hopeful there will be a new album of art songs. Yeah, that'd be nice. Soon, but <laughs> first I have to focus on the album I'm doing yeah, now. Yeah, the, the, the one that's on your It's plate. happening right now, yes. <laughs> Is that going to be another Kickstarter type thing? Or are you going to, what, what are your thoughts on funding that? Um, yeah, so I, I'm kind of burnt out on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I did Kickstarter for the Snow White Turn 60 CD, and then mm -hmm. I did Indiegogo, which was not as successful, and that, Again, this whole the whole second recording project just kind of train wrecky and mostly mm -hmm. my fault, I think, for not planning and for trying to rush things. I thought mm -hmm. I needed to make it happen quickly and I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I for this one, what we're doing, uh, we actually just have signed CD pre-orders and they mm -hmm. are $35 and they are on my website and Coral Arts Initiative's website. Um, and we're going to be pushing those, I think, more uh, as we get closer to the recording session in mm -hmm. August. But um, we we have other sources of funding too. We have uh, donors and different things coming through there too. But I just I really like the idea of for this one of not trying to pressure everyone I know into mm -hmm. uh, into doing the Kickstarter thing, and of not having all those many many levels, which sometimes become more of a pain than they're, than they're worth. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're making tote bags or, you know, who, or like you <laughs> promised, I'm still writing for the Indiegogo thing. That was mm -hmm. a disaster. Um, I right now I'm still working on one minute piano commissions that I uh, promised the hundred plus dollar donors. Although of now, now I think since it's been, I think two years since mm -hmm. 
this happened in my head I'm like well I should write them with interest because it's taken so long <laughs> so I should write <laughs> two or two and a half minute pieces oh man um but no, for for fundraising for this one, we're trying to keep things keep things simple. It's pre-order or don't, uh, and the the CDs come early too if you pre-order them. Oh, that's and that, you that. get them. They're signed and they are up to a month. We're saying up to a month because we're not exactly sure what's going to happen there, but nice. hopefully a month before they're officially released. Yeah, oh, you know what? I forgot to make, turn off part of my sound. Sorry, <laughs> I realized I have an air <laughs> conditioner rumbling away in the background. Oh, that's uh, fine. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, when 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 we did our Kickstarter, um, I I I modeled it after yours, sort of for you know where yeah. you, you you did your Kickstarter with uh, with Stowate Turn Sixty as yep. uh, for people who don't know as a, a, a more of a pre-sale mm -hmm. than, than anything else. You already had some yep. funding in, in we the had, bag, and yeah, we had I think a grant. We had a Subido grant from the American Composers Forum. That's what yeah, we, yeah, that, that's what we did. Yes. That's what that one was. Um, and then you, you operate as a, as a pre-sale so that the amounts weren't high and you weren't asking for a ton of money. Um, yeah. We operated in a similar way where we, mm -hmm. it was really aimed at get the, get either the digital album or the, or the physical signed CD. Right. Presumably early. It wasn't early. <laughs> <laughs> it never yeah. is. It the semi turn 60 is. ones weren't either. I think they, I think the hard copy CDs arrived after the digital one. Yeah. Available. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it, hard it, putting together a project like this. Oh, it's there's so, so much that goes into it. Just the mailing, like signing all of the CDs, getting them all mailed. Yeah. Ooh. And that's not even, yeah. That's like the tiniest part of the process, but it's still something to think about. Yeah. We had hoped to get our CDs out, um, you know, before, before the actual launch date, but mm -hmm. we actually got the physical CDs themselves on the launch. On date. the launch, date. yeah. <laughs> so that day, like the next day, we went on our tour. So we were mm -hmm. gone for a week and got back, and it still was another two or three weeks after that that we we had time to sit down together, yep. sign the things, yep. and then and I said, "You now, Mark, now you're done." You know, like yeah. go, you can go home. <laughs> I'll take care of the postage. I'll do all this, and that is, t you know, I, I yeah. was toting like three big bags of, <laughs> of mailers, and yeah. we, were, we were silly and said, "We'll also for for higher levels, you know, we'll put you in the liner notes as a certain like, mm -hmm. you know, gold ever so right. level, right. silver level down or whatever," uh, and they they would get one or more of the the scores, mm. which we didn't have time to get them signed, and we didn't. Mm -hmm. promise that they would be signed anyway but mm -hmm. mailing that stuff out <laughs> yeah well that comes back to i think it's the same as commissions where if you build in extra time for yourself i mm -hmm. i'm slowly learning this and it's been mm -hmm. through every project i've done like it there's never there's never enough time unless you leave yourself too much time mm -hmm. and then there's enough time yeah, and even barely. still sometimes it comes down to yeah so yeah yeah you, you big can... deadlines are wonderful wonderful things oh, yeah i know <laughs> but yeah they, they can be you have to you have to hold yourself to them if you're going to do a yeah a, a fake deadline and that's that's for me that's really hard yeah yeah <laughs> i no, it try is, and but... it's, it's rough yeah um but yeah i i really liked your, your kickstarter um and and how you did that so i kind of want to move 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 along a little bit uh mm -hmm. to some of, you mentioned uh earlier just the word publishing and mm -hmm. i wanted to know uh from you you've been doing a hybrid thing yes with with your particularly cor just choral works it's it's hybrid everything else is mm -hmm. just used everything up. else is self-published so yeah yeah i um I've found, I, I, it's funny because I can speak very passionately about self-publishing and mm. I am very much pro that. And then I also have, I think it's as of this spring, it'll be seven published pieces nice. um, with G. Shermer and Boozy and Hawks and just choral, just mm. choral pieces. Uh, and then another one for next spring just got picked up. Um, and that's been... Uh, I've been trying to be very conscious about which pieces I put where. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So uh, the pieces that the coral pieces I think will potentially sell well, and and I should say right now I'm not making a ton of money with score sales, like lest it look that way. I'm mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for the floods to come in, um, <laughs> because they they trickle, mm -hmm. very slow trickle. Mm -hmm. um, but theoretically, uh, certain pieces that are more accessible to a wide range of groups uh, that are just easier, mm -hmm. um, that could be done by high schools and community choirs and college choirs, those I hold on to the copyright for the most okay. point. Those, um, those I have not been seeking out publication for, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure is exactly the opposite of what publishers would like because they want the ones that are going to sell. So instead I've been putting the more challenging pieces that are more for good college choirs and mm -hmm. pro choirs. Um, those have been the ones that get published. Mm -hmm. So they, again, theoretically would not be selling as many copies anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this experiment plays out. Uh, <laughs> But I've, I've found it worth it. Um, I know like with, with G. Shermer, uh, that came about because Dale Worland conducted a piece of mine at the conference where mm. we met <laughs> after yes. knowing each other on Twitter, <laughs> uh, the 2011 Chorus America conference. Mm -hmm. um, and so he published that piece in his series and has published uh, one more, soon to be two more since. Um, and then that connected me to uh, Scott Foss at Hal Leonard, who is my editor, um, who I have sent more pieces to, and he's helped place them in different different series and different spots. Um, so, yeah, but with that, I mean, with it's hard to say no to being published in the Dale Worland G. Shermer series. Yeah, really. Um, and especially I, I interned at G. Shermer when I was a sophomore in college, which is kind of funny because no one, there's, I think one person, the person who I worked directly for mm -hmm. is the only one who actually remembers that I was even there. <laughs> and I did no choral, like there was no connection there. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing. They have no idea who I am. But now I'm published in that, in that series and, and just having that, I don't know, that was something I wanted and it, it happened and mm -hmm. I feel good about that even though I don't necessarily feel great about the whole 10% for me 90% for them yeah. thing you know loss of copyright uh, mm. that's where it gets into you know self-publish stick with self-publishing <laughs> keep your copyright yeah on the one don't hand yeah the, the, the big uh, the big publishers can offer a visibility yeah, that you, you may not otherwise be able to get mm -hmm. when you do it just on your own, and especially being in in a series like yeah. that. Uh, choral choral music, ha it's got this special, wonderful thing of, of curation that mm -hmm. I had never really thought about until I think it was that conference, or uh, or, or possibly um, the a the ACGA. 2013 i think uh con conference that i went to when when the idea of curation finally uh just slapped me in the face and i'm like this is oh yeah that's that that it, it's a great way for for if, you know if, if dale Worland or doreen rao or or this person or that person ha has a, a famous series that you can really get a lot of exposure yeah to a lot of different places well, i know I know it, uh, Dale single-handedly emails, or not emails, he mails out, I think, 150 mm. of those scores when they come out. He has people that he wants to have mm. the music in his series, yeah. and so he sends it to them with a note. Um, mm. And then I do think with if you are looking to get choral music published, uh, knowing a conductor who has a series or who knows another conductor with a series mm -hmm. really is the easiest way in, because mm -hmm. it, I... Um, before the first publication happened that led to all of the other pieces, um, I had sent so many blind query emails mm -hmm. to so many choral publishers and got some really lovely rejection letters and <laughs> some really short, awful ones. One was two sentences and was horrible. Mm. Um, 
It was like, this is not the kind of music we would ever consider publishing. God. It's like, well, well you will never have my music. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, yeah. I don't want to give it to you now. Yeah. yeah exactly. um, but no, it, it really is. If you have someone who can kind of help get your foot in the door with that process, mm -hmm. then once you're in, I have found it's a lot easier to get more music published. And sometimes the blind query thing does work, but mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, it all, it's with, again, with anything, it comes down to knowing people and maintaining connections. Yeah. Um, like this one aspect of the music business is, is all of it. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what, that's how I got published and, and I don't know. Emma now trying to hold on to copyrights for everything else <laughs> more or less yeah. Uh, yeah do you do you do you think or do you know uh if if that is having, having those pieces published if that's boosting your other sales at all or 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 do you not know or not suspect that i don't have any um i can't quantify it i mm -hmm. guess but i i do definitely think that uh, in terms of name recognition, that's helped a lot mm -hmm. because for whatever reason in the choral music world, there's still, um, there's still a, like a sense of validity to publish pieces where mm -hmm. um, I think that is rapidly changing, mm -hmm. um, very rapidly, like in, yeah. in a, it's evolving very, very quickly and uh, publish or not publishers, distributors like mm -hmm. Music Spoke, who all of my self-published work is with um are are trying to change the system and i i mm -hmm. think and hope it's working um but i do think it, it for whatever reason there's still some something to having a published score and conductors see it and they feel i don't know it's i don't i don't know what that something is but i think it is i i think my strategy is working in that sense from what i've seen yeah, I think or from that, what what has happened in the last year? Yeah, I think that the publication it, it what it does it it is a sort of it's a validation, not just for 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 your ego, but for for someone else to say, okay, these people who we hope have discerning tastes or who claim that they have discerning mm -hmm. tastes mm -hmm. have decided that this this person is worthy. Is, yeah, <laughs> this piece yeah. is, is worthy of which of, it's not. Oh, there's so many oh, terrible published oh, pieces. Like oh. maybe. Some of mine are terrible too. I don't know, but um, so it really it, it means it shouldn't have the weight that it does necessarily. But the fact that there are these these gatekeepers, I mm. think, I don't know. Yeah, and I think it, well, particularly with with um, like the these curated series, yeah. that in particular lends right a, a stamp of authority, right? You know, just ha to have Doreen Rao say this piece is in this series of mine and therefore yep. you will like it if you if you like yeah, this yes. series you will like it right or if you like yeah if you like my taste or if yeah. you like my choices this so is I, what I, I know some there, there are actually not just some there are a lot of uh choral conductors out there who they buy up the the series like they they mm -hmm. follow the series they wait for it and they program most of it because it, it is very easy for them yeah to to just say this this taste maker uh, yeah. has has said that these are are worthy of of my time and effort, and therefore they are. I think that's what's scary too about, um, or I mean, not actually scary, but potentially scary to conductors looking at uh, the new well, looking into the vast unknown world of choral composers on mm -hmm. the internet self-publishing mm -hmm. like where do you start how do you know what's good how do you know where to look and then mm -hmm. places like music spoke are helping i think um but i could see how it's still scary even then like mm -hmm. even if, if it's 100 composers in the same place or 50 composers in the same place there's still mm -hmm. a sense of where do you start and where do you yeah find things but but i do think as um as self-published music becomes more in the system and more present in things like ACDA conferences. And I think that music will start showing up and being 
maybe regarded in the same way. Like if we can get other other ways of curating it or um, putting you know someone's stamp of approval on it, yeah. maybe that can help with that. Yeah. Uh, for, for people who don't, who don't know, uh, Music Spoke is a distributor online uh, run by uh, Kurt, Kurt uh, Connect. Say, Connect. <laughs> I was like, is the K? He, I, yeah, I, no, he, he says. He says the K. It's, yeah, I think he says the easy the easy way out is to say Connect. Yeah. Um, I just was, was and, hesitating and his over wife, his last name. Jennifer, it, yeah. Yeah, Jennifer uh, Rosenblatt. Mm -hmm. um, that, I see their names every day on Facebook yep. and sometimes yep. I'm like, oh, did I read that right? Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, it's sort of a two, two man operation there, uh, of distributing works purely digitally, right? It's just yes. digital. Although um, they make an exception for conferences. They've, yeah, they, they, yeah. they just left chorus America, I think, or they're there for, they're, they're little, there. They're there. Yeah. Maybe um, they're, yeah. I, I, I forget what the, I don't know. the conference schedule is, but <laughs> I'm yeah, not they, there. I wish I was there. I know. I do too. There. They, they, uh, He's going to go, but no. they, they do, they do a good job with, with that site. I've got a, mm -hmm. a handful of pieces. They're mostly my choral stuff. Um, yep. and speaking of curation, they're, mm -hmm. they're just starting, a, their own curated series now. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, that's one of the ways that the self-published composers can get, uh, can get that stamp of stamp of approval is for for these these places if there's a you know trusted conductor or conduct uh, yeah. trusted person who who will curate those and i know that they're working hard to get that i think they're planning to have many more although yeah. i shouldn't shouldn't speak for them but yeah. i, um, I want to have Coral Coral on the show uh, yeah, I, I you to, should to, yeah have to give him a call uh, great. <laughs> yeah. um that way that way he can we can get it from the, the horse's mouth rather than us right this is what I think I read on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, well, they do. Told... They did just launch Coral Initiative. Coral Arts Initiative just uh, launched a series. Yes. Um, Brandon that's... Elliott, the director, who's recording my music in a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have music in that series because <laughs> that makes sense. But, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I think that's a good. That that would be a good way for for those of us who are who, who don't do the hybrid thing or <laughs> who haven't broken into the hybrid area um yet well and there's no there's no reason to i if i did make it sound like there is a benefit to being published and you could argue that there is but at the same time i i don't i don't know that there will be in the future mm -hmm. at all and, and yeah. that's a yeah, for, great for the, thing for the time being i think yeah. this is a, a great uh it's great visibility for you uh it it, it it puts your name in front of people who might not otherwise see it or might not mm -hmm. see it as soon right um, and it's totally not yeah it's it's totally not for for everybody i'm right i'm on the fence not not that i have anybody you know knocking down my door but i'm on the fence as to whether or not i would want it but would you wait. exactly and maybe and, you and maybe you wouldn't because yeah I think you are I so have... business savvy and and marketing savvy and maybe <laughs> that would even take something away to maybe it wouldn't be worth the royalties or the sorry the lack the lack of royalties maybe it wouldn't be worth the additional exposure maybe they wouldn't be giving you anything that you couldn't theoretically do for yourself yeah I th you have would, to make that decision yeah exactly yeah it would, it would it would be totally a looking at the looking at the individual deal who who mm -hmm. is this that that i mean right let, let, let's hypothetically say somebody came to me tomorrow and said we would like to publish, you know, I, either this piece of yours or these pieces of yours or your entire choral catalog. Mm -hmm. And I would, ha you'd have to just evaluate the, the the thing. And if it's if it's one piece or two pieces or or, or a segment of the catalog, um, I think you've been smart about which ones you you give away. I'm trying. We'll see, though. That's the thing. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see. But I'm I'm trying to at least put some conscious thought into because yeah. those, well those pieces that you that you grant the copyright to a, a publisher in, in you know you would consider that to be a loss leader mm -hmm. that, that, that that right that term you know that, that you you decide right. that i i don't need to make mm -hmm. a lot of money on I just need this people piece to or those pieces hear this piece yeah and then and that, maybe buy my other pieces mm -hmm. over music spoke yeah, yeah. And, in in the book world and in, in the world of yeah. novels there are a lot of authors who will they'll take a, 
a deal with a publisher for one book or two books or, or a series or something. And they know that, yeah, they're not going to get the royalties mm -hmm. from that. They're not, they, 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 they'll have more sales probably on right. their title than on their self-published titles, but the return will be a lot lower, but mm -hmm. it gets them into, it gets their name into places and in front of yep. people that they wouldn't otherwise have. So it might yeah. get them, you know, the, on the co-op tables at the front of Barnes and Noble, right. where people can see it or, you know, spine out uh, or, 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 or cover out. Um, yeah. Or, or just just having you know like behind me all these, these <laughs> the spines people yeah. you know, I'll walk down the, the rows with my mm -hmm. head tilted to the side and look at mm -hmm. everything that and yeah I'm, I'll, I might come across an author or in this case a composer who I might not otherwise have known about and then look them up online and find out oh yeah they have all this other stuff right so somebody can get your get one of your published pieces say oh I liked that a lot let me let yeah. me look up Dale and and then say oh she has all this other stuff that's only available through her right here's some recordings great i want it right and again still fairly early in the in the experiment to see <laughs> but yeah, yeah i definitely want i i i, I want to kind of keep touching back with you on on that to, to yeah. see how you're how you're feeling about that and um ha obviously have you back on to talk about yeah. <laughs> you know, any updates you may have. Um, so we're okay, we're a little past the, the half an hour, half hour mark. Um, just keeping an eye on time. We would be two years ago now went for drinks near mm -hmm. around Christmas. Yeah, uh, when you were visiting and that was a, a lovely evening. Mm -hmm. uh, tipsy evening. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you ended up talking about that that has but that stuck with me, uh, and it's something that, that consistently has come up in, in when we've talked. Um, and I did you talked about this a little bit on on composer on fire with with Garrett Hope uh, of the the idea that you're you're taking things slowly, purposely slowly. You're not trying to to rush ahead, uh, and I think that's really smart. Yeah. Can you tell me tell tell us a little bit yeah. more about that? Yeah, I yeah. Know. So I I feel like it hasn't always been this way. Um, and the first, uh, definitely the first part of my career, like in, in college, all of those um, rejection letters from publishers that mm -hmm. I mentioned before, I was sending my scores out to every choral publisher I could find. Mm -hmm. And then looking back, I have maybe, maybe one, may, maybe two pieces that could have been published but looking back they're not really a good fit and i see mm -hmm. that now and i i just was gunning for everything like i've mm -hmm. been applying to every contest that i could find and it's it's exhausting um mm -hmm. it's draining and in the last few years i've been trying to very to focus my energy and my attention on the things that will like the the bigger the bigger things that I can control mm -hmm. that will maybe have the same trickle down effect as if I was trying to get all the little things at once. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm maybe re retiring from contests as of <laughs> <laughs> I reserve the right to change that statement. But, um, but it's, yeah, I've just, I haven't been feeling a rush to get everything to happen quickly because this is, uh, we, we compose, if we, want to compose, then we can compose our whole life. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. That's a long time to get everything that you want to happen or to try. Mm -hmm. And there's really, there's just no, in terms of publishing or recordings, like this recording project has been in the works for two years and mm -hmm. we haven't tried to rush it. Um, we've thought very carefully about what needs to happen when and kind of let it unfold Mm -hmm. according to a timeline that makes sense for the project. And again, with I mentioned, I mentioned the failed recording project. That was me trying to just like, <laughs> well, nothing's really happening, so I should put together a recording. And that's mm -hmm. such an ambitious, not <laughs> necessary at all thing when there's maybe, maybe I should have spent that time composing more or, <laughs> or thinking about more thoughtful future way I don't know ways to <laughs> be 
yeah, but my, my overarching philosophy lately has been like, if something doesn't happen, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Come through later. I don't need, I don't need the score sales to be pouring in. I don't mm. need to be pushing that super aggressively. Um, lately, every time I post about my own music on Facebook, uh, I think I might try and write about this for the Music Spoke blog, but I'm just nice. feeling so burnt out on the way that we talk about our music and promote ourselves. It's all just, I'm so excited that I have a concert. Like, yeah. I'm so excited this piece came out and I really wanna <laughs> dig deeper into this like where like why should we i don't know why should we care but that's a different that's a different thing that's not taking things slowly that's a whole different, <laughs> yeah, different guest post for music spoke maybe yeah yeah um i i think so yeah uh, but what are your what are your thoughts on on that like what you said you've been thinking about that yeah i i too. like it i mean like you've Part of it too has been, you know, you, you, you've told me that you've uh, been more likely to say no mm -hmm. to, to projects or, or to idea, to, to things. And, and not that it's like, no, but <laughs> right. say, a gentle, no, <laughs> yeah, a gentle. Yeah. Um, I mean, case in point, actually, um, the, this podcast, this was something that I had, yeah. I had originally approached you and another friend to, yeah. to be like three co-hosts of the show and yeah. it, it, it didn't fit your, I just, your well, schedule. and I thought I did. And I'm, that's one thing too. I'm trying to get better at, at knowing when in the process, because it's, I mean, I've, I've told you, I've listened to the first few episodes mm. of the podcast and I love it. And I knew you were going to be great <laughs> at it. And I initially wanted to be a part of that mm -hmm. because we can always use more podcasts talking about the, nitty gritty yeah yeah business i don't know questions about composing <laughs> um but in terms of how that would affect me and my schedule i i don't know like i'm i'm a very anxious person i get <laughs> i get anxious and stressed out very easily <laughs> and i know that it would be it would have become something that i resented mm -hmm. even as i enjoyed doing it yeah. like in a moment very very much mm -hmm. i would have enjoyed it and I'm enjoying talking to you now. <laughs> and, uh, but but in terms of um, getting involved from the very beginning with something, that's mm -hmm. another thing that I'm learning. I, th I thought I liked to be the one, you know, producing all by myself, like mm -hmm. the album and doing the like graphic design for the concert flyer mm -hmm. and doing that. And, and I, I don't like that as much as I <laughs> thought I did, or maybe it's changed, but I am much happier now to to co-produce or just to be mm. a guest on your wonderful podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, you, you know, you, I'm going to ask you back all the time. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, I will come back all the time. Oh, good, good, good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, th but, yeah. I think it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it, to say no to, to things that um, I to, to go back a little to, to bring this back uh, yep. to something that I said earlier. Um, I came, I came to you and to Corey with this idea and it, it was my baby. Yeah. And, and, and so it, it's not, it wasn't your baby. Yeah. And so that, that makes it, you do have to ask yourself, does this fit with what I want to be doing, uh, you know, an hour a week, every week right? with right. whatever attendant, uh, planning and whatnot so so all you know but beyond that it i think it's very smart for to take a look at the at, at things that are presented to you and to decide is the, is this a thing that i want to do mm -hmm. is this something that's really worth my time or is it a worthwhile thing that i shouldn't do yeah for for me it's a lot about too it's not just do i want to do it because this has come up to um, there was like, there was a, a commission that I said yes to, and then said no to, mm -hmm. I think the next day or two days later, mm -hmm. um, because I hadn't thought about how it would feel to actually be doing it. And in this mm -hmm. case, it was a, a bigger piece and I was working on the secular requiem and to have mm -hmm. two, to have no break between two, mm -hmm. like 
30 minute choral pieces. That's just not, that would have yeah. really stressed me out. And if I was mm. traveling on top of that, that's just not in the moment I would have felt like it just, it wasn't, it wasn't the right fit at the right time. Um, and, and even again with the podcast, I know how, I would feel on a weekly basis. It would be like, mm -hmm. oh, I have to schedule this around this and I have to prepare for this and I have to, and <laughs> I, again, I get stressed out so, so easily. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah. So I've been trying to focus, I've been trying to recognize what's going to make me feel, what's going to feel easy and what's going to feel like something I don't know, potentially, I don't know. Sometimes it's just doing too many things at once too. It doesn't matter how much I want to do them. Mm -hmm. Like it can be a wonderful, wonderful thing and I want to do it. And then I'm, I just, I don't know. Yeah. You, but, have, to, you have to make the decision that, that this, you know, that my energies are probably better spent elsewhere and right. that, that, and those energies may better be, be better spent taking a nap. Right. Yes, and the, those energies are a limited resource mm -hmm. too. Yeah. You you can't run out and, and do and do everything and, and, and yeah. chase chase every opportunity that comes along. Yeah, you, you should be smart about it and not kind of you know feel like you're whoring yourself out to every right. a, a, every everything that comes along. Oh yeah, yeah, me right. me me. Um, yeah, and I. I Another one thing that I particularly like about your your philosophy is it's so, it's predicated on slow growth mm -hmm. of your career, and, and it's not just as I understand it, it's not just that you're um, you're not rushing after all these opportunities, but you you want your growth to be incremental. You want it to be very methodical, rather than um, than hoping for that explosion hoping yes. for the thing to take off and yes. you're or the, the next big name the one piece that sells a billion copies and mm -hmm. every chorus is doing it like i i really thought i wanted that and then now thinking about it more i think it would even benefit it would probably benefit my career because i am interested in writing more chamber music and that's something mm -hmm. i'm doing a little bit more of this year nice. um and I want to do an art song CD and it just, it, I think it, everything would feed each other. Mm -hmm. everything, I don't know, much better if it's a, a slow, steady, I don't know, <laughs> a slow, steady slope rather than a that steep the, incline. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah it, it, uh, we, we, we talked about this um, and we don't, and, and we managed to do it, I think, without naming too many names. And we'll do it today without naming any. <laughs> but uh, well, and, and the also, the, the names that we could be naming, there are people who are very successful mm -hmm. quickly, who are who are writing wonderful yeah. music. Yeah. And that success has benefited them uh, a oh, lot. Absolutely. And that's, it's not something that you should be hoping, like, hoping against. And if that no. happened to my music, I would be You'll be grateful. happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just think it's in in the intention mm -hmm. right now. That's not what I'm gunning for. Yeah, and it, and it, it, which is the difference. Yeah, and it maybe. seems that you're you're trying to avoid one one of the things you're trying to avoid is that that straight up, you know, curve. You can oversaturate. Yes. Uh, you can like, with let's let's say with 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 choral music where you you have a lot of you already have a lot of traction to suddenly have every choir performing. Dale Trumbore. Right. At, or, at, but, at all the conferences. Or Dale Trumbore's and... piece, mm -hmm. whatever. And then two years later, it's like, oh, that piece is so 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, or, or I don't like know. Ev everybody, ev every choir has, has now done most of your catalog and they're a little, yeah. they're a little worn out. They're like, yeah. Okay, Let's let's not do any Dale for a while because <laughs> right. we've we've done enough. Right. We've you know we li we like Dale, we like her music, but we've done enough. And yeah. I, I think it's it, and it's I think that does happen. With, yeah, to some extent with choral music. Yeah, I've I've when when I was in but choirs, I I sort of saw that just kind of waves sometimes of yeah. People. And I think that this slow be, being methodical and not trying to to blast your music out everywhere mm -hmm. all at once can really help to mitigate 
that particular problem. Yeah. And, I think and ag again, even if like, even if that did happen, it's about knowing what you're going to do after the wave mm -hmm. has, has crested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like how you want to be prepared. You want to have deep roots mm -hmm. that are going to sustain you through whatever happens. And that comes back to people again and knowing mm -hmm. people. Um, I launched a, a once a month, um, I'm calling it a letter and not a newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I launched that in January, uh, mostly because it's, it's not full of news. It's full of, um, it's called Poem Piece Post, and it's a poem that I'm setting and mm -hmm. a piece that I have a fairly new recording of and a uh, post that I've written about something. Nice. Um, because I'm, try I'm not trying to go for the, like, here are all my concerts. Come to mm -hmm. my concerts. Yeah. Um, which is a super valid newsletter and, and mm -hmm. very effective, very effective, especially if, you are geographically targeting areas because then you do want people to come to your concerts yeah. and you do want people to know about your concerts and that's like by all means do that but i the reason that i launched that the way i did was uh aiming to cultivate the relationships with people mm -hmm. the people on the other end over the performances because the performances right now are just kind of Sometimes they're in the middle of nowhere and yeah, yeah, and no one's going to come to the venue. I don't know. Yeah. But like being in New York is entirely different because, I mean, LA should be the same, but New York always seems more like <laughs> things are, things are happening all the time, which they are here too, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> well, I think, you know, unless yeah. you are going to be hyper savvy with your with your mailing list and really segment it according to geography. Sometimes yeah. sending those um, sending those those performance performances to so like oh I've got I just had a, a, a um, well, I just had a performance in in LA actually just this past uh, weekend and oh was that with Nova yeah 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 they, they, I didn't they, I couldn't go because I was at rehearsal. <laughs> but yeah. yeah I, I had meant to, to otherwise do some I would have been there. I'd meant to do some more uh, of my own little like Facebooking about it, but then you know, dealing with cat dying that I was like, professional yeah, things well, go that... away right now. I don't deal with this. <laughs> yes. Um but yes. it you know, had I put out, you know, one of my newsletters in advance, I would have mentioned it, but it, Right. But most of my list is in Illinois or in New York or Virginia and very very few people there. I love your mailing list for also like you included your wedding when you got married. Like you, you include little personal. I I really feel um, when it when it's fitting. It would, yeah, yeah I, I I I I'm getting. I'm trying to be more savvy about my my mailing list. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm really. I, I I I I hear a lot of podcasts and things that talk about how to deal with your mailing list, uh, you know, as an author, mm -hmm. and then how, how do I turn that into stuff for a composer? Um, yep. And creating creating those uh, those relationships. I mean, obviously, they're already on your mailing list. You already have a relationship right. of some sort, probably. Right. But but to bring these people into my life, like yeah, they yeah. know that I'm writing music. They know that I'm performing, and I'm going to let them know about that. I'm going to let here's yeah. the, here's the latest pieces or here's whatever. Right. But also. I got married. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's and a people, really big deal. And that that was one of the most opened emails that mm -hmm. I ever sent. And I, mm -hmm. I actually made a point. I'm like, I'm going to title my like, the subject line of my emails. Like, yeah. like we got married. Yeah. And it's and then I talk about that. And then okay, here's some some music stuff too. And I, and um and I've also and in, in, I think you were the first one to to be featured in this i have this little oh i saw yeah end po end mm -hmm. bit to every all of my things now um i make a point of highlighting a different composer right you know, a composer that i know and i say hey i like this piece of theirs and i just call it mm -hmm. what what am i listening to or something like that and yeah and I, because that way i do have some choral directors on my list and i do have some voice some singers on my list and so to to put a choral piece up by somebody else at the end yeah that could that then they get the exposure because right. i just I, I was a nice person well I, and usually was... that comes back to you in some form yeah. especially i think especially when you're not trying to <laughs> come back like yeah. in, in a you know look i mentioned you 
look, look, yeah, I did look, it. Look, yeah. What are you gonna do for me? Yeah, um, yeah. I just, I just when, but, I, when I go to write my 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 newsletter, I just, yeah. Uh, I, I think about okay, who who is it that I want to that, that I want to yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You yeah, know, like I've already, you know, Dale Clint. Okay, yeah. now it's it's this person, and yeah. you know, put, put a re you know get the link to the recording, and there we go. That, yeah. That's I. And then the, then it's not just all about me and my career, right? And these these are the performances. This is the it, it, it's not just the the Dennis show because uh, <laughs> this is the Dennis show. <laughs> well, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that. That that's something that I've really tried to cultivate there, and you know the the open rates are really high, and I have yeah. a lot of people that write back. I get yeah. a lot of people responding, and and, yeah. and it's it's a personal. I'm keeping up this relationship, and and that's that's what it's about. And and I'm I'm in their inbox every couple of months. I should do it once a month, but I'm a little lax about it. Well, uh, you do it when there's a when it's important critical yeah. mass of yeah good things to talk about. Exactly. Yeah, I think that I think that element of being being personal and being a real person mm -hmm. in your in your professional life is so important because there's there's not for a lot of us there's not that much on the surface that distinguishes what we do necessarily mm -hmm. if we're a choral composer in a sea of choral composers mm -hmm. or we write a lot of chamber music. There's a lot of people writing chamber music and yeah. And, and even stylistically, there's a lot of composers out there. Um, and so recognizing your experiences as something to share and distinguish you, I think, is a really valuable tool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If we, yeah, if it's I, used right. You don't want to just spill your guts on Facebook all the time because that's oh, yeah. not I, attractive. <laughs> I, I have seen, I, I, I will not even describe what I saw uh, and certainly no names, but I got a composer's newsletter um, num number of years ago that was a. <laughs> I want to say appalling. Most people would find it appalling. I, I was uh -huh. just shocked at uh -huh. the level of sharing. Oh. In, in it, it, it was it was far too much. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll I'll tell you. I may have mentioned this to you. I'll tell you about it when we're off the air. Okay. Um, but, yeah. but that was such a, a major misstep. Like that was too far. Yeah. That was, that went yeah. too far. But, but then I get, you know, I'm, I'm signed up for a bunch of, you know, friends mailing lists and, and it, it, I don't like to open a lot of them because I know it's just mm -hmm. going to be a list of performances yeah. that are <laughs> in no way geographically near me. Right. And there's and, nothing else to spark your attention. Yeah, it, it's it's a list of of links right. to to this symphony and that yeah. that that ensemble and this choir. Yeah. You know, con congratulations. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, wonderful. But, but that's all there also, is to say. That comes yeah. back to the. I'm so excited. I'm so mm -hmm. excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. We know you're excited. Congratulations mm -hmm. on your performance. But mm -hmm. do you have anything else to tell us? <laughs> Yeah, it it gets yeah. It, it just gets to be like I I don't I don't want to open all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And oh, a quick note to everybody <laughs> on on mailing lists, uh if you if you're setting one up, don't just automatically add people to it. They will get mad. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying this out of uh, experience, but I well, I am saying it out of experience. I have been added to some mailing lists. Yeah. I'm oh. Like, the I don't know who you are. That reject you and then put you on their mailing list. Oh, and the yeah. first one is a request for money. You're like, screw mm -hmm. you. That's, nope. I could subscribe. I realized as I said, screw you. I could actually be cursing on this podcast because it has an explicit label, which I think yeah. is hilarious. I but know. I'll stick fuck, with fuck, my. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Threw in some profanity. Yeah, I already um, said horror earlier. So. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word stops the conversation. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I've had, I've had, I've had a couple of people, no clue who they are, mm. no clue. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I read the the, the first thing I said, I still, like, 
are we Facebook friends? And like, then I have to look them up yeah. and realize, no, we have, there's no mutual people. I don't, I don't know how, I'm, well, it, yeah. it's pr probably pretty easy to figure out how you know me. Um, Cause I've consistently put myself out there on the internet for yeah. forever. Um, I'm, and I'm happy to join your mailing list, but right you know don't just add I, people yeah. because i when i started mine i i i did sort of auto add my entire um, well that's what you do i think for the, for, for to start one, and you have to be I, a little yeah i remember i wrote a uh an introduction mm -hmm. to it like this is what this is going to be yeah and then at the bottom please feel free to unsubscribe mm -hmm. that's totally cool yeah it's easy like if you want to do that that's yeah that's great so I've, had, note, I've had one or two people get a little mad at me i think mm, because they, yeah. they were originally added and they didn't you know Wanted know and we and we weren't that close um yeah and so one one person when they unsub unsubscribed said i already see this on facebook and it just oh. seemed really kind of catty and i was like all right fine, fine. well um you can't but I, also, everyone. I also like didn't realize that i had um john adams's email like his personal email in my list and so he got auto added to my oh to my newsletter and i was like oh crap i i added i added some like some people with names and uh then i and you can see like who opens what i'm like oh he read the first three that's so nice <laughs> that's really funny I, i'm I, i'm thankful great. he didn't you know just say who the fuck is this right so, which he's totally entitled to do There's some of them some of them actually like i've had um I've, I've there was one recently where I was added to the email list and and was like oh like I didn't sign up for this and then I opened it and it was it was more of a story like it wasn't mm. just like here's what we're doing it was like here's what I'm up to and like I I can read those all day like yeah. I will happily read what's going on in your life that mm. relates to music if you yeah say it convincingly and yeah. like have interesting things to share. And so now I'm super thrilled to get those emails. Yeah, so, yeah there, there, there are some people that I'm like, I'm glad to, to get that, that it's, email. Yeah. Cause it's gonna be, gonna be a good read. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. It's gonna be engaging. Yeah. There was one other thing that I wanted, we, we started, uh, I wish I'd written this down. Consortiums? No, you wanted to talk about. Uh, that could be a whole different podcast. The, that, which one? Coral consortiums. Oh yeah, that that was that the thing could that be I, a whole. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're at the hour mark, and I we want are. I want to talk about that. Do you want to stick around for a few minutes and do it, or do you want to come? Sure. Back? No, so okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> you did a, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Yep. You this past year, or the year before. It was for Christmas last December. So it started a year ago. Okay. A little earlier than a year ago, I started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did a this really thing that we haven't actually said what it is. Yeah, <laughs> let's just dance. It's gonna talk in circles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really cool. Let's never yeah, mention what it say, is. And, yeah. End of show. Um, <laughs> Real credits. Uh, <laughs> so you did this really cool cor coral commissioning consortium that um, I like. When when I saw that you were doing it, I was like, I'm gonna share this with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is awesome. And I appreciate it. <laughs> so. Uh, T t tell the the everybody out in listener land what you did yeah so um it was a christmas carol consortium it was for two new acapella christmas carols um and the the consortium was called christmas past christmas future i think yeah that sounds right oh uh, christmas present christmas now i can't remember what i named it <laughs> um no uh but it was um what, a setting of a contemporary poet that i've worked with many times of kind of a nostalgic text and then um the part of the end of a christmas carol um talking about living in the past and the present and the future uh mm -hmm. it's scrooge talking about what he's how he's going to live his life forward so the mm -hmm. contemporary text looked backwards and the uh public domain text <laughs> <laughs> the older text looked forwards mm -hmm. um and so i thought they even though they kind of had nothing to do with each other from a programmatic standpoint they mm -hmm. they complemented each other well um, and so I started that, I think in, maybe in April, mm -hmm. I started, or I started planning it maybe March, March and April. And then I started the emails about it. Mm -hmm. 
earlier. And I think I also made it clear in that series of emails, because I, I kind of, I planned out how many emails I was going to send as kind of a, a launch sequence. Mm -hmm. um, and made it clear that if they weren't interested, they could, I, I think I did this, that they could, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not interested, that's fine, let me know. Mm -hmm. um, and then 16 choruses signed up, which was awesome. That's great. Uh, and the buy-in, I think, was 225 because I wanted, for my first one, that's actually maybe probably low for two choral pieces. Um, but I wanted to make it an easy yes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's almost what we pay for sheet music if we have a big community chorus. Yeah. Um, so why not commission and premiere two new pieces? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that went well. And then uh, um, I think all but two of them, two choruses, bought in and then we're planning to do the chorus of the uh, new pieces this Christmas, hmm. um, which is very nice of them because yeah. it's, I don't know, planning very far in advance. But. Yeah. yeah, I think that's yeah. a, a really cool, uh, cool way of go going about it. Create, create, you know, creating your own opportunities. Yes. Uh, <laughs> to, and you did it really in a really smart way. I like the idea of having your, the, the barrier to entry for, for this, as for the first time out be something that that yeah it's, it's an easy yes right right for, where if really if you have any budget i i, I mm -hmm. think that's that works for most choral budgets that's mm -hmm. on again on the low end for a buy-in mm -hmm. or two Absolutely. new premieres that's i was trying to make it just like oh yeah like i've wanted to do a piece of dales mm -hmm. and now i can do a premiere yeah yeah i think that's that it is very smart and it's nice that you know you're not relying on sort of one choir to to start mm -hmm. it or or to to foot the bill for everything which is a great yeah. thing about con consortia in general is, is yeah. not everybody like everybody's sharing the, the the load right um but to to have well the, it helps that you have the contacts that you do i mean you mm -hmm. uh, that that kind of put, puts you in a, in a good position um but then I'm sure I wasn't the only one sharing that on, on Facebook. I, I made a point of targeting uh, the conductors that I knew. Yeah. And I was on like the ACDA group and yeah. the, I'm a choral conductor group and all of yeah. them saying, Hey, check this out. You know, this yeah. is, this is something, um, I mean, even for, for, to, to watch this be successful um, yeah. is, is inspiring to me and, and lets me know that right. it works. It's you actually something you can something do. Something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the uh, choice to make it Christmas carols too was also like I, my market was very market. My, well, no, you, it, <laughs> my it, target it, audience yeah. was, was very specific. Like I know a lot of community choirs do Christmas concerts and not mm -hmm. all collegiate. There were some collegiate ensembles and two high school groups. Mm -hmm. um, and not all of those people do Christmas concerts, but mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I knew I would have fun writing the pieces. Yeah. They would probably be a great fit for the people. Yeah, so. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's it very targeted. It's, it's not just, hey, somebody commission a piece from me. It, it's, yeah. here, you already knew in advance, this is, this is, these are the types of groups that I'm going after. Yeah, if is... I'm going to be asking people for money for my music and doing that <laughs> myself, then it should be something that people maybe want to consider mm -hmm. saying yes to or think think twice about. Yeah, and it, yeah. It, it's a lot different than um, just saying, I want to write a string quartet mm -hmm. and and then canvassing string quartets mm -hmm. out there to, to try and fund something. I think this is a very, very smart way of going about it. I and, think if you were going to do a string quartet, say like you if, if you knew it was something that would pair with certain pieces in the rep or if it was like a piece inspired loosely but if there was some kind of mm -hmm. hook that you could yeah. pitch even to say like string quartets that don't normally do as much new music but do commission every once in a while like mm -hmm. if you if you target if you know who you're talking to that's a big yeah plus um... in terms of getting Getting work. Mm -hmm. I forget who, who who it was a couple episodes ago. I was talking about um, clarinet trios that uh, mm. um, 
I, I remember I, you mentioning that, but yeah, I don't. Remember. I had heard from, uh, it was at a panel, Edward Yim of the uh, New York Phil had said that uh, cl there are a lot of ensembles out there looking for clarinet trios right. to pair with the Brahms. Right. And that's so smart. To, yeah. to take a piece, you know, basically Especially writing, when it's a small, a smaller ensemble. Mm -hmm. it, it makes you it so know. much yeah. easier if, if you're not talking choral music. Yeah. Um, it makes it uh, much, much easier to have a, to basically write a companion piece to something that's already yeah. done. I know people who have written companion pieces to, um, to uh, some other Brahm, like Brahms. Everybody writes uh, <laughs> companion pieces, Brahms, uh, for some of the Brahm, Brahms uh, intermezzi. And then mm -hmm. I sang on a concert that was all four voices and two pianos th that had to do with love, like the the Liebesleader mm -hmm. and the Neue Liebesleader. Yes. The, you know, John Corleano has a, a four voice two piano thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Hoff has a four point four voice p uh, piano three hand, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is kind of an interesting take on. That. <laughs> there's there's a lot of and yeah. and it's very it's a really easy programming decision yep. even if it's right. not being commissioned it's a very right. easy programming it's, decision yeah. for, for other performers it's easy um, to say yes too so with that uh with that consortium to get back to that before we wrap up uh is there anything from that that you that you thought not necessarily that you did wrong that you would tweak in the future like mm. is this something that you want to do again i guess is the first question yes i'm actually i'm thinking about doing a book of rounds mm. and having that potentially be a group consortium. Yeah, that's cool. Um, of like 20 rounds or something mm -hmm. that, that maybe go beyond what you think of as a round where it's mm -hmm. like two voices that can go and I don't know, or you can start at any point in the, in the round and it'll still overlap <laughs> in a pleasing way. I don't know if that would be successful, but um, I, I don't know. I did, I gave myself so much time. I, this isn't, something I wouldn't do, but this is mm. something that I would continue to definitely do. <laughs> I gave myself way more time than I actually needed. And so the pieces mm -hmm. were very, very polished. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it was like we were talking about at the beginning, um, where if I, if I hadn't done that, I would have been stressed out and right up against the deadline. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there were so many little things like making the, sure the title page and the um, well, just the title, making sure, like double checking the names of every choir. And then I mm -hmm. made an individual PDF for every choir that said just their name at the title. Oh, so nice. the list of all the choirs was there. But like that, that takes time. That yeah, stuff takes totally. time. Um, and making like demo, I think I did midis for mm. like rehearsal recording, like all of that. Mm -hmm. It's, there's a lot beyond and just sending lots of emails. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you want your dedication worded? Is it different from <laughs> what I might think you would want? Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think there must be something I would do differently, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not thinking of it right now. Um, is that something yeah. that you, yeah, um, just because this is a thing that's in, in my brain right now for, for a project, is it something that you would... Um, maybe not for this one, but down the road, consider essentially hiring help to, to manage some of this. Some yeah. Of the, the all, emails of, and... all of the nitty gritty mm -hmm. details Admin. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's crossed my mind. And I know, um, I think when you get to a certain point, it's just, you have to hire yeah, an assistant. Yeah. Yeah. At a certain um, point. And I'm not quite there yet, but mm -hmm. maybe, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully yeah. I'll be so successful. I need, I can't even handle my <laughs> my own work. Um, that came out sounding strange, but, uh, but no, I, I mean, someday, someday. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I'm thinking not so much as a, an, a like I, I just guess for the one project well, or I, I think, so, um, yeah, I think more, more for the project and, and I guess in yeah. some, some way an assistant, but maybe more along the lines of, I'm mean, thinking of like a, a manager, someone, someone hmm. who, who would take, oh, who could okay. take some of the the burden of finding the choirs yeah. and then being in in communication with them. And is that something that I, for some reason, I like being the one who's in touch. Mm -hmm. Like I really like that aspect mm -hmm. of it. 
um, to the point where I'm, I'm frustrated when I have a piece being performed and there's no contact mm -hmm. or even if it's a premiere and there's, and I don't get that sense of interaction. Yeah. Um, I know this is different because it is at 16 choruses and obviously mm -hmm. I didn't go to all the, I think I went to, did I even make it to a premiere? I went to a bunch of rehearsals. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I like, I like doing that kind of busy work, which is <laughs> maybe not the best thing because <laughs> I should be farming it out. But it, yeah, I think it does. It comes back to that idea of maintaining relationships mm -hmm. with people and I don't know. I, I just asked yeah. because I have a, a, a project that uh, I'm I am I am hiring someone to yeah. to handle it, it it'll, it'll be a commissioning consortium and, and I've hired someone with a lot of a lot of contacts in the industry well, that, to yeah, yeah. That, so that, that sounds that, like a good yeah, a good that, move that that's that's, Dude, where, like, that, that's if they can open up doors that mm -hmm. you don't know about and I certainly like if I'm, if my list was even bigger maybe it would have been a thirty person consortium you know, maybe mm -hmm. it would have been even even bigger but um yeah. i guess i was just thinking in terms of bringing bringing more people to the table or or not handling all of the the interaction but at least some of right um, right yeah that's just yeah rattling around in my brain because of this, no i think that could be very that, yeah. very helpful uh, what's it can i ask what what are the forces involved <laughs> uh it's it is uh I, I sort of mentioned it a little bit uh it, when I talked with Chris Cresswell, it's this opera. Yeah. Um, oh. And, 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 oh, and, yes. and it was a little Good bit uh, of a sensitive situation it's at the like time. Now it's black resolved. box. Uh, black yeah. box ready. Yeah, it'll be. Um, black form is, yeah. Yeah, fi yeah uh, five singers, eight yeah. instrumentalists, eight to 10, um, yes. 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. that. And that, that situation has resolved itself. Well, that's um, diff that's. Too. So, that's that's hard. That's good that it's resolved itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it turned it turned out. Uh, long story short, a group commissioned this, and we have both withdrawn. Okay. Mutually. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're all very happy. Um, that's. that's good. <laughs> but I'm going to continue with the work. But something right something then. like opera too is so different from chorus, where there's mm -hmm. so many so many moving parts yeah. that, and it's harder it's harder to get those performances. Mm -hmm. I think it's harder to get people to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so having someone with many contacts who can help yeah, it's... shepherd you along yeah. the path. Is... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, absolutely higher. <laughs> yes, higher yeah, away. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that many people uh, yeah. in, in well, that it's, world. It's a hard, I think it, it from, I haven't written an opera yet, obviously, <laughs> but it sounds like it's a hard world to crack. Yeah, in many ways, especially yeah. for second performances. It's yeah, and that's, very that, that's why I want cool. the consortium not not just to to, to yeah. ease the financial burden on everybody, but right. to to make sure that there will be. Well, that's the beauty of a consortium too. Is is you just everyone wins on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Like for the composer, you get a whole bunch of performances, yeah, and then which is awesome. they get a premiere, and it's cheap, and mm -hmm. that's yeah. yeah, yeah. They 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 save a lot of a lot of money for for doing a, a yeah. new thing. Yeah. <laughs> so shall we wrap this up then? I think we shall. <laughs> uh, so Dale, tell us where can we find you on the internet? I am, everything is my name. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Dale Trumbor. And my website is daletrumbor.com. And I'm on Facebook, I'm everywhere that you can expect to find a composer <laughs> on social media. Oh, a quick note about your website. Um, yes. I really like your um, your keywords. Oh, the word cloud thing? Yeah, I think yeah. that's really smart to, to have. Um, Thanks, that's a I'm, new thing. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, so th there'll be a description of that in the show notes. We don't need to go into it here, okay. but uh, the, or at least too deep. Um, yeah, there's, it, it's a great way of, of putting your works together for uh especially the choral stuff for, yeah. for programming purposes so yeah. you know everybody check out dale's website thinking. and see how she handles that because i think it's really really smart that's another another experiment we'll see in the next yeah. year and two, or two how it how it plays out and whether it actually 
gets more score sales. But yeah, yeah. If it doesn't, no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah. Stick around. I'm going to stop the broadcast. Uh, All right. So thanks. It's been again. great talking to you. You too.